Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Mural Joe Live. I'm just taking a second here to get rid of this little thing on my brother Ben's picture here so you can see him. He is joining us today. He is managing all of the chat for me so that I can paint and we can uh, together answer any questions that come in. That's what this show is really for. It's to give uh, very practical answers that I use in, in my work. And so if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. But I, I have a knack for understanding the patterns that allow me to freely create the things. Of course, a lot of you uh, have seen, seen it before. I'm just being redundant by saying this over and over. But it is my passion to make helpful tools, share the knowledge. And so this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really glad that you're joining us today. So right away, we have some comments that came in late, some artwork that came in late after last week's live stream. And so I'm going to take a minute just to answer those really quick because we don't have a whole lot else on the agenda today. So what have we got, Ben? What have we got there? Yeah, so uh, we got uh, Katie Falcon here. She sent in some celestial stuff. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. You're on camera, by the way, and you look good. Hey, hey, thank you. Now, let me get myself out of the way. Whoa, so cool, cool. Business. I like this. Yeah, and and so uh, I did take a look at these real quick. And this is something that I don't really get into a lot. So I have to appreciate the the thoughtfulness, the time it takes to do. This looks like a mixed medium. I, I see some natural separation of some different materials. It looks like there's something separating inside of a container to create that closest turquoise planet. I love it. Super creative. And I noticed, I noticed that when you when you look at the uh when you look at that round planet, that turquoise planet, we can go back to the picture. I just want to see my hands. Like, you know, when you look at that, it's scrunched on the edges. And so uh, that causes a perspective. I just thought that was a cool thing that naturally happened. That causes the perspective. You can see that planet actually looks, or maybe it's a moon. I don't know. It looks round because there's scr yeah. scrunchy shapes around the edges. And I, I thought, wow, that'd be a hard thing. Or maybe it naturally does that because of the container. But I was admiring that. Okay. I'm, I'm just yeah, going to give one really small critique. What were you going to say, Ben? Go ahead. I was saying Katie's into spears because we've also got this deal here that uh, she sent over. So you've got. Uh, oh, some... yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is this is the same artist here. And it's yeah, very same cool artist. as yeah, well. Yeah. These are both very cool. Fun to look at pieces. Okay. So I'm going to give two similar pieces of op opinion on this, and you can take it or leave it, on, on the first one uh, with the planet. So let's go back to that one real quick. Let's look at that, that turquoise planet and the outer space behind it. The, yeah. the critique that I would, I would give on that one is make a, a painting about something. And so that, that doesn't mean that this picture is not about something. It's fantastic. It's super cool. It's fun to look at. But if you really think about your piece in a way of what, what do I want to really make the focal point, choose one thing that's the most important thing. And you, it doesn't have to be obvious. It doesn't have to be a giveaway. But if there's something, or maybe it just feels like it's about something, for the uh, picture that's behind me, you know, I had this this picture. It's it's all crazy. You can look at you know Mural Joe fantasy painting. You'll see videos of it. Same thing. I had all this stuff going on. That's cool imagery. But then the last the last challenge was tying it together to make it about something. So your work is fantastic. I love it, and uh, the colors are super cool. I love the composition. But you could try to really just blow something out. Extra bright, extra big. Something going on and subdue the other things a little bit just to create a feeling of it's about something maybe it's a mystery you know just something to think about uh, i think about that in my own work all the time and i need to take my own advice okay now let's go to that next one and yeah, so we you want to see the uh the other spheres or you want the to yeah on? yeah let's go to those they look like some some real cool dandelions some bright colored yeah man we're space in dandelion, dandelion. Yeah, like awesome. fantasy land over here yeah yeah it's super cool i love it Okay, uh, this similar thing, but but uh, 
I have noticed in my own work, since I love shape, I love content so much, I really celebrate it, just put it on the canvas real bold. Sometimes I forget that it's fun to see a picture that didn't pose for the camera. And so if you put every single circle within the frame and there's no circles that are halfway onto the frame, it feels like it posed for the camera. It feels staged. You can make it feel like you caught an interesting moment if you take some of those, those awesome looking dandelions, which I love the way you did the gradient. They're brighter on the edges, makes them very 3D, nice effect on that. Uh, just put some partially on the canvas and I think you'd really like the result. Just an opinion though, use your own judgment. That's more important than mine. All right, we can move on. Yeah, check this one out. So we got one from uh, Lori. Oh yeah, yeah, and, okay, cool. Yeah, so she's she's got this picture that she painted. Yes, yeah, I was in it's this. It's a scene from a place that her husband lived for a long time and uh, she's trying to make the foreground lawn green, which uh, she doesn't feel really goes with the rest of the painting. So she's hoping that you can give some idea of what she can do. Um, I'm gonna do make just that grass kind of happen or I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to back up to my canvas and I, I understand the struggle completely. Uh, I'm just using last week's paint. We're going to paint right over this. It's funny. There's where get rid we're of it. Get, get rid of garbage. Get rid <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. We don't need this. Nobody wants to see okay. that. Okay. I completely understand the struggle. And it seems like we were just talking about making the picture about something. So when you make a dramatic sunset, if you were to take a photo of a sunset and you saw all those brilliant colors, well, the rest of the landscape would just be a silhouette. And so I understand the struggle. How are you going to put bright colors into something that would naturally be a silhouette? But the good news is we can cheat with paint. We can do things that we would not do with, with a, a photograph, you know, and and modern technology photographs can cheat too. That's what HDR does. You know, it, it gets the best of both worlds by, by, you know, altering the contrast level between objects. So you see color everywhere instead of just on the brightest things. But my point in saying that is I know your struggle. I know the struggle. I'm going to show you how to make greens in a sunset color scheme. So I'm so just while real Joe quick. a big yellow circle in the middle of his <laughs> painting and tells you about all this awesome stuff it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say what's up to everybody out there. We see you out there. Uh, creative Mom, Bernice, Fari, uh, Art with Kelly, all you guys. Uh, cool. Cool. New Zealand in here. What do we got? Netherlands. Ben's been, uh, Ben has been to New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand is so good. Oh, man. So good. Yeah. Dude, I it's have a shame that it's on the other side of the planet from where I was born. No, <laughs> that's the, oh, that's man. The, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a newfound love for Taiku Waititi, right? Is, oh, am I right? Is that oh, a New Zealand? He's on, a New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, national treasure. Taiku dude, I, I'm kind come of on. behind the times. You know, I, I, don't, I don't watch a whole lot of uh, TV. I watch some, but just not a lot. And so, that was kind of a oh, new yeah. thing, but we stumbled across some material from that. Oh, yeah. He's solid. He's okay. solid. Watch a movie Man. by Taika Waititi, everybody. It's good. Yeah. Taiwan, uh, Canada. Yeah. We see you out there. All right. Cool. Well, I'm very honored that you all would tune in. I know that you're at odd hours. These are not uh, normal hours to be tuning in for a lot of you. So thank yeah, you for check, taking check the time this out. out. Somebody uh, just straight. Let's see. Where are they? Um, yeah, the Netherlands. Ariella says hi from the Netherlands. Netherlands. Unfortunately, the live show is too late for me today. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll catch the replay. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to leave that nice comment anyway. Uh, nice. Brazil. And Brazil. All right. Cool. Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Nebraska is exotic melting point. Don't don't you believe anything? Yeah. Nebraska is <laughs> corn husker country. Yeah. 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 We've been known to live in uh Corn country, yeah, don't we, Ben? Yeah, Niger, yeah. look at that. Brazil, hey, hey, all right. Illinois, New York, Alabama. Yeah, I love the uh, you guys. widespread, widespread community. That is that is the, the era we live in. People of common interests come together from all locations. I love it. 
And yeah, we got the West we Coast covered. Leanne, she's up on the West Coast of Canada. I'm down here on the West Coast of Southern California. Okay, okay, sweet. Coast, coasting, Georgia, Cali. All right. Should I take a minute and explain what I'm painting, or? Uh... No, that's cool. We'll just talk about locations. For yeah, now. it's cool, man. I love it. I love it. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? What is that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just didn't want to get too far and leave anybody behind. I just I just threw some black up on this canvas. That's all it was. And then I let it mix with the red and yellow and white that's in the sky. This is just white. And then I have yellow, red. I just did that gradient. You can look at other videos on sunsets to see how you can real quick produce the look of a sunset. Okay, so now let's say, you know, I just used some black just to make a distant shadow. And there's lots of atmosphere color in it. I just added the color of that sunset to keep it simple, red and yellow. That's it. Now and I've got my background. And you can see that I can vary the shade of it. Uh, you know, maybe it's more on the yellow side, maybe more on the on the red side, whatever. You decide what looks good. But when it comes to those greens, I'm going to show you how to handle that. So a lot of the time with color, you can add too much white so that you don't have the color. Maintain your high contrast so that you can get a nice dark green. So a sunset green, your sunsets actually really do bring out lots of green. So you can make a very yellow green. So we're going to do that. We're going to do yellow and black instead of yellow and blue. We're going to create a very dark green that doesn't look like the uh, more bluish green you'd expect to see during the day. And so let's just do that real quick. Watch this. Black and yellow. I don't even have to put any details. It's just black and yellow. And maybe I'll put a tiny bit of some orange in there. A shortcut to it. Watch. I'll just grab. I could do red and yellow, but... I'll just grab this for a shortcut. This is that rusty color I use a lot, a red oxide. Just enough that it turns it to a brownish, brownish green. So you can use black and yellow. You can turn it brown by adding any shade of orange. And so let me get this a little darker with more black. You can see it's kind of getting, kind of running together. So in that painting we were just looking at, you know, I, I can see some areas where it's, it's, it's looking real bright. You could darken it to maintain the look of, of that evening and still have lots of color. See, I didn't use white in this. There's no white in this landscape. So now I'll just put a little bit of texture just for giggles. You know, we're going to put we're gonna put little bits, just yellow. That's all this is, just yellow. We're going to put some little tippy tops of some grass or bushes in here, whatever it is. The sun is just barely catching it like this. It would get closer and tighter as they go back, but you can see what I'm getting at. This is a very dark color, but it looks like a sunset green. So this is something that you can just put in your tool chest. You know, a good color in a sunset for your greens is black and yellow. And then add a little bit of orange if you want to boost the sunset color. And you don't have to. That's a way that you can boost it and put it in there. So you now it's pretty weird. Why are you getting green out of black and yellow? Yeah, because right? yeah. nobody taught me that in art school. You right. Know? right. Yeah, that's true. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, that don't get explained. So so, you know, uh, the short answer is that uh, color changes when mixing happen from filtering. And paint. You know, it's one mm. color on top of another, letting one color through. They're all these real transparent particles. If they weren't, then paint would have amazing coverage, you know, but. Uh, the reason you can see through paint when you don't get it thick enough is because it really is transparent. So how much more is it transparent when you've got something just a millionth of an inch thick or a millionth of a centimeter thick? You know, uh, those are particles of pigment. And so when they're on top of each other, uh, the black will allow the green side of the spectrum through more easily than it will allow the red side of the spectrum through. So Ruth has a question here. I don't know if this means anything to you, Joe. Is it a Payne's gray with yellow or a Mars black? This would be like a Mars black. I just, Mars black is a great example of a black, but it could be ivory black. It would, it would work the same. You can, you can add the yellow to it. Uh, do your own experiments because honestly, I am not an expert on specific pigments they they can be different they can vary but the patterns always exist you'll you'll always be able to get a greenish color from mixing black and yellow 
So all I did here, you know, I just wanted to show how I can use black and yellow to create a, a very dark landscape that still looks green, still makes my sunset pop. I'm going to put little highlights around these dark shadows to make them look like backlit bushes casting these shadows. So, you know, I just put these dots and with very little effort, you know, I can create this effect. Now, if I, if I really took time with a smaller brush maybe or with better technique to try to dial in some details on this, it, it, it might look even, even better, who knows? But the point here is the effect that you can use, you know, so we'll move on to the next one. You can see I've got my little bushes and I've got my shadows. I've got good, good contrast levels to still maintain my sunset feel. Okay. We're going to go back to the other paintings here. Okay. So imagine so... that color in that with that truck. Imagine something in there, nice and dark, dark brown, green. It would go great. Try it out. Send me a picture. All right. So what we're moving on to now is we got one here that is a, um, oops, it is not where I thought it'd be. And oh, now oh, we're moving he's on to... What's he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> we are... Oh, good, good. I like this. I like this. All right. So what we got here is, uh, you know, this is Paula. And okay. Nice work, Paula. Nice work. Thanks she for being brave tried, to show it. She tried her best not to turn her water green where the sun was hitting it, but it got looks it. like it turned green anyway. Common problem. Don't feel bad. Happens to the best of us. And so I'm going to show you, even, even though this is something I cover a lot, there's no shame in me saying it again because it is such a common struggle. I'm going to do another demonstration on here. I've already got a sunset. Might as well put some water. We're going to turn this into a pond scene. Okay, so now I'm going to create a little bank, okay, because we need some water to make some reflection on. So we're going to put a shadow. Going back to my black, hey, let's put a little bit of that rusty color in there just, just for the fun effect of it. So we're creating a shoreline here where maybe the grass drops Melting off. point loves your sky. It looks great. Hey, all right, cool. Thank if you. If you guys have any questions or you want to shout out anything to Joe, go ahead and put it in that comment box there over on the side. We'll, we'll uh, make sure it gets through. Don't be shy. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for looking out. It was always uh, such a such a stressful thing for me to try to read those at the same time as trying to do this. Ben is always a great help to me doing this, you know. And Brian too. Kudos to Brian for being on top of the cameras. That's right. This lovely Thank camera you. work is yeah. brought to yeah. you by Brian's expertise. That's it. And you know, uh, the mural Joe is becoming less and less of a person and more and more of a community of, of people here. It just would not be the same if I wasn't sitting in this room with Brian and my brother having a good time talking to all of you who are watching. You know, it's very fun. I, I just have to say thanks again for that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing I did for the sky. I'm going, okay, wait, hold on. We need to show, we need to show how to manage the green problem. So uh, forget about this white. This white's in my brush. I'm just getting rid of it for a moment. We're going to put some blue water. We need some blue. Now, so this water is, this is very unnatural for water to be blue and it is this shallow, but we're doing it anyway because we want to see reflection. I should have just done like a blue piece of litter on the ground. That would have been more, um, Likely. <laughs> okay. Let's go like this. My The reason I say that is because the body of water I'm painting is very small. And so I wouldn't expect it to be blue. I love I love the art that you sent in. That example is, is fantastic. Don't get mad at me for saying I should have painted trash. Okay. So we're painting a blue body of water here. I'm just, I'm just putting whatever blue I can get my brush into very quickly here. And so we're doing blue and white, blue and white. You know, a trick to painting quickly too is apply, apply, apply. Okay, next step is spread, 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 spread. And then blend if blending is still needed. Those are the steps that you can follow to be very effective in your work. Okay. So we've got, we've got flat ground. We would definitely want to see a reflection of that sky. So you go in here with the yellow and 
you start putting it in, you're like, I'm going to put my sky colors. Let's put yellow. Let's put red. Yay. This is going to be amazing. We're going to create this sunset again, yellow and red. And then it starts turning into an unattractive green color that doesn't look like reflection. It's very disappointing. So here's what you do. You scoot the color toward purple. Now you can either just add magenta. This is magenta to get rid of the green, or you can just mix yourself a light orange, which is what's going to happen. You know, this, the sum of these colors is going to be like I mixed a light orange and put it on top of this. So wherever I'm reflecting yellow, white, I can correct the green with magenta, or I can just mix a color that's closer, just closer to violet on the rainbow, just scooted, scooted toward violet on the spectrum. Same with the orange. I'll use red to make that reflection. So let's scrape this off. Watch. Here's a, since I already have a lot of demos of me using magenta to manage this problem. Let's do it another way. Let's create a light orange and watch how that is the same color theory with a different technique. So we're going to go red and yellow. Okay, we're making orange, making orange right here. And then we're going to put white. We want a light orange. It's got to be lighter than the water. And when you mix paints, they typically get darker, not lighter. So you want to usually add white when you're mixing in order to in order to uh, create the look of reflection. You got to counter that undesired effect of it darkening. Okay, so now this color, this peachy color, will be the reflection of my yellows, not my oranges. My yellows. Okay, so let's start. Let's go here. Oh, we've got a mountain. Okay, that mountain. Our horizon's about right here. The mountain would be, well, we'd barely see the mountain, so it's all right. We can go like this. Put that light orange in there. We don't even really need any waves or texture in there, you know, but I'm just going to do whatever this big brush does. I'm just going to go with that. And because this color is strategically chosen, just the color itself should, should. It's always a bummer when I call my shot and then it doesn't work. Okay, let me go like this. Light orange. So the goal is to get it just far enough from the yellow that it no longer turns to that unnatural green result. Okay, now I need this to be a gradient. I've got my whole sky to paint. And so now I'm going to scoot the next color to more of a red. So where I'm reflecting the orange, I'm going to scoot that toward violet. So that's going to be a red. So let's take red on here. We're going to go red. We're going to add white. And of course, we have to have less of it as we come into the foreground to make the look of reflection. So under the orange, I'm going to put red. So Nancy is curious, what are you mixing that orange color on? Oh, it's just the lid of a cheap uh, sample. One of these guys, Color to Go from Sherwin-Williams. They did not sponsor this video. Okay. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Seven bucks. Seven bucks for that paint. Okay. I'm going to go like this. And the idea with this technique is to allow it to mix. I don't want to see that color all by itself. I want that color to end up the right color when it mixes with my water. So this is a wet on wet technique. So just adjust accordingly. If you are doing wet on on dry, you don't you don't need to do all of these color changes. This is designed so that when they mix, you don't get a bad result. OK, so now you can see this gradient is starting to resemble the reflection of that sky. And then we just want to see it get more and more intense as it goes back. So we're going to go like this. We're going to add some more of the orange. Here, let's get some of this in here, get some white. And I want very horizontal shapes. See how these are really mounding up? It's like, whoa, where's all the turbulence coming from? It doesn't make sense. So we got to make sure that we put horizontal shapes in there. So I'm brightening it up, going back to the orange, not the red, and making it get more and more into and more and more the color of the source as I go further away. Okay, that's how you make a reflection on water. It's that simple. It's just a gradient and understanding how to predict that, pre predict that undesired green outcome, move the color toward violet in order to do the reflection. Now, last thing, I'm just going to put little reflections right here. 
under this. So I'll do black, black and yellow. And we're just going to put these under here because I want to see reflection of my grass and my water. Like this. There we go. My brush is just loaded with that light color. So I got to get some of that out. You know, you get rid of some of that light color. We don't want so much of that. So when it comes to reflections of things, you can make them darker, you can make them lighter. It really just depends on the color of the water that the reflection is happening on. You know, it's just it's just a combo of the two colors, a combo of the water, the underwater color, mixed with the source color. Oh, I got to do this too. This is a trick I like. Here, you can see if you can zoom in a little on this one, Brian. We're going to go... Like this, we're going to make this light color right here. You know, like maybe the sky is not not quite as intensely orange back there. Wherever it ramps up on the shoreline. I did this on the last show too. My hands are kind of shaky today, so. We just do these straight lines along the shore. Just a little bit, as skinny as you can. You know, you just want that just, just to create the shoreline. Bob Ross did it better than I can. He did it real good with the teeny, teensy little brush. But it's where... It's where the water ramps up onto things. You know, water has surface tension. It ramps up onto stuff, and it reflects a lighter part of the sky, you know, than, than the rest of the uh, reflection below it. So it's a fun effect you can do to further define the shoreline as well. All right, now I'm going to come in here. I forgot about this. I had the shoreline kind of going up right here. There so here's go. one. Here's one from uh, from Aeon. Aeon. A E O N. Yeah. Aeon. Good job on the pronunciation. Nice. Thank you. I'm, very, I'm a very good pronouncer. People pronounce that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so <laughs> Aeon says, "How do you do that grass when it's in the foreground and larger? Right? They're trying to create grass in the foreground, but not having much luck." Like, yeah. you know, it's all cool to just like scribble, scribble, and hey, look, we got grass, right? But yeah, okay, like, cool. If, yeah. What if you're trying to yeah. do like close up grass? You right. Know? You're talking about the grass that I'm painting right now. So we'll go back to that. We'll go back to that and we'll do some grass. Okay. Let's put some grass. So, so make sure I'm on the right track. Ben, you're asking about grass texture. Is that right? Is that, yeah. How, how do I do grass, grass texture? Close up versus far away. Okay. I wish I had my mullet brush here, you know, but you, you know, know we can talk about we can talk about that. Mary C is also curious about adjusting the perspective on uh, one of these paintings that we saw. Oh, OK, very cool. OK, good. Good. We should do that. We should do that. OK, give me a second here to get distracted. OK, because I think some zigzags going up. There's really horizontal zigzags might look great right here. Sorry. I didn't mean to make the painting more important than everybody else, but I got caught up in this. No, right well, you know, we're kind of caught up on okay. what people have sent in. Remember, guys, send in anything you want us to check out, anything you want Joe to see, to info it. at muraljoe.com. Info at muraljoe.com. Send that over now. All right. Thanks, Ben. That sounded pro. That sounded super Send pro. it now. <laughs> Don't yeah. wait. Good job. Do, okay. do what I tell you to now. <laughs> That's good. Send it now. I never did like those. I, I have never no, responded to does. it. It's horrible. But well, why, why does this? Everyone has is no. No, I'm not doing that right now. It sounds I don't horrible. know. They, there must be a reason that it's existed By all now. this time, no, that, no. that strategy. <laughs> yeah, I never have responded to an act now sales pitch. I have never yeah. done it. No, I'm sure there's data on it. Yeah, right. I just, I'm mad at the people that respond for ruining the world for the rest of us. So let me try this. Send your paintings to info at muraljoe.com whenever you get around to it. Oh, now that's the other way. <laughs> ben, go back to the just now. <laughs> go ahead and, you know, oh, feel your way out. You that know? reminds me of the, uh, a movie I love called The Invention of Lying. There's a Coke commercial in that that just makes me roll over laughing. I love it. You got to watch the movie to see what I'm talking about, though. Okay, so look, I'm putting my colors on. Here's my here's my sunset colors in my grass, my black, my brown, my yellow, and I'm just gonna make shadows. So I, you know, every every piece of art, every painting, every image is parts. 
and the smaller parts exist within the boundaries of larger parts. So understanding the, the large shape. So I'm making clumps right now. That's what I'm doing. I, I'm making clumps. So we've got a clump here. we got a clump here. And I'm going to create gradients that go down into each of these shadows so that when the uh, grass gets deeper and you see more down into the dirt, you have more shadows. So I'm not going to have this sharp line. See that real sharp black line? I'm going to take bright yellow and go drag it down, make a gradient. So now... Now I'm on my way to having gradients. And so you want to see that even though the grass is a bunch of small shapes, you still want gradients. And so what we'll do is now that I've created my very basic colors, now to make this really pop forward, I want to use my bold colors and then mute them more with my atmosphere. Mix, I shouldn't say mute, I should say mix with the atmosphere to make it further away. So this, this hopefully has enough atmosphere mixed into it. I don't know because I didn't plan this part. But in order to get this to pop forward, we want the bold contrast, the dark shadows, the bright highlights. We want it uh, unmixed, no, no atmosphere mixed in with it, just, just the colors as they would appear with this color of light shining on them. Okay, now get a, sh a, a brush that you can sharpen like a knife, anything. It doesn't have to be a teensy-weensy one like that. That one's kind of... Kind of tiny. Let's go to a bigger one. Okay. Now I just want to create shapes. So there's probably many techniques for doing this. I've already got my colors in place. So my next my next um, task is going to be just to create my grass blades just by slicing through this. So I'm going to go up from the shadows. I'm not just going up anywhere. I'm going up from the shadows. And then I'm going to go down from the highlight. So I grab a yellow section go down into the shadows that yeah, method Darinka, will... Darinka is saying you know that's the beauty of painting uh, different techniques can be used for a desirable result right like you can arrive at a, a great place using a number of techniques uh, yes yes definitely and I I would uh, I would word that it is that it is the not to correct I'm not correcting because that is something I love about painting but I think that it is the beauty of knowledge. You know, it's it's understanding. Well, you just leveled up. You just leveled up. <laughs> no, don't Marika. say that. Leveled up. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. No, finish that thought though. That is that is important. Though. Well, I only say I'm not saying that to try to sound special and brainy. It it is what I have used in order to gain control of my work is the quest. For knowledge rather than the quest for a great looking painting i uh, i don't just stop when it looks good i i theorize what pattern needs to take place in order for it to look good and then i do it according to the pattern and if it doesn't work i try something else you know and i one of one of my least favorite things was when i would get a good result and not know why I, that was always very frustrating to me it doesn't happen as much now, after, after, you know, 15, 20 years of experience with it, it's not, it's not as common of a, of a thing, you know. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I don't want to try to overly fine-tune this. So you can see that there is a, a very general pattern. It's really, it's really kind of a messy picture. And this is not a detailed scene of grass. But what I want you to see is how my bright colors blend downward into the shadows my dark colors blend upward into the light. I do clouds the same way, except kind of reversed. Well, it just depends. So every object I create, if it's textured and, and has the ins and outs of a three-dimensional object, it, it usually has a gradient pattern like this. I'm bringing one color into the concave. I'm bringing the concave color into the one that pops out. And so you can just use whatever techniques you want to get the texture and... and uh, you know, then uh, share your awesome techniques with me when you figure out a better way. So Travis says, hey, Joe, big fan of your art. Hey, Stop thanks, Travis. Stop painting over it. Stop. <laughs> Boy, buy it. <laughs> I'm running out of places to put it. <laughs> hey, touche, touche. Uh, so also uh, Grace Artistry says, Mural Joe's totally a mix between Leonardo da Vinci and Bob Ross. <laughs> nice. So 
Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thanks for the flattery, guys. Thanks for the flattery. Yeah, I just see it as uh, I just see it as having the good fortune to come across some very useful patterns. You know. I yeah. So it. here's here's a, here's an interesting thing from Ferron. Uh, they say sometimes they forget how uh, they got the results they've achieved before, and then have to relearn it all over again. How do you prevent yourself from like? accidentally creating something cool and then not being able to do it again well that's what i'm saying you know that's like saying how do i stop being human you know uh, uh that is the frustration of of having limited understanding and and trying to use a a more scientific method to gain it you know you do end up with great results that you can't explain and i all i can tell you is you're not alone it happens to me and like i said it's one of the most frustrating things i deal with is getting results that I like and not feeling like I can reproduce them. And so I think what really helps is always doing work according to a plan, you know, not well, okay. I'm not gonna say that. That sounds kind of anal to say always do it according to a plan. But when you, when you do things, when you do things by an experiment, you know, then it helps you to remember you're like the experiment either worked or didn't. And that's much easier to remember than, than randomly trying things that are not in some organized approach, right? That's harder to remember. If you, if you make a to-do list, then it's, it's easier to remember and keep track of what you've done, what you haven't. Whereas if you just wander from one chore to the next in your house, you might forget what you were doing. You might forget what you did, you know, that's the best advice I know how to give. You know, Leanne volunteers this thought that the inconsistency is what makes art valuable. Hey, all right. I'll take your word for it. So uh, also Claudio, Claudio, yeah, Claudio says, uh, you using some acrylic retarder for drying time or how are you keeping your, your paints from drying out on you? No, I work fast. That's it. That is the answer. But right, you know, I don't know if you remember that that little thing I showed when I was first doing the water where I said these steps are apply, then spread, then blend. That's what stops it from drying. So I I uh, combat the rapid dry time of water-based paints by not giving it what it needs to dry. I have found it a difficult thing to use when I put other mediums in the paint. So I don't use that method. I'm not saying it doesn't work. Maybe it'll work great for you. Give it a try. But my method is just, just to, uh, you know, be sure that I covered this. Uh, we're going to go over here and I'm going to put a blob of black. As long as I don't spread that black, it's going to last for a long time. And then let's say that I know that I'm going to add yellow to it to make a green. So I'm going to put blobs of green in it approximately where I think it might land, but I'm not going to spread it out. No, this is, this is, I know I didn't do that when I was putting this on because I was using a big brush and moving fast. Speed is the solution. But in order to buy yourself some time, I do this often when I know I've got a more complex gradient to blend. I put it on heavy first. It's heavy. It's not blended out. Okay. When I've got the colors that I think I'm going to need, then I go to the spreading process. Now I'm going to start spreading it out. I'll take the black and put it over here. I'll take the yellow, I'll bounce back and forth, start doing this. Okay, so this is going to give me the time that I need. So when, whenever I see people battling dry time and it's really becoming a very apparent struggle, it typically looks like this. A very undersaturated brush. We're going to get the paint out of the brush. We're going to get a teensy, weensy bit of yellow because we're trying to be careful. We're trying to be careful not to put paint in the wrong place. And then we go here and we start doing this and we say, okay, now I want to blend that with some black. So then you go down here. Can I hope we're zoomed in enough. Sorry, Brian, I'm working real tiny. So then you go and you get some black and you put it in. Okay, now I'm going to do like Meryl Joe said and blend it with black. But that yellow is already dry. You're not going to be able to blend it. It's just going to make a blob there. You know, so the trick is put the blobs on, don't spread them. Put that blob of yellow on above that black, then go to the blending. That That's my main method. That's my approach. 
to battling the rapid drive time. So we can come over here and we can. So to get back to your other point real quick, Idawu, uh, sorry if I just butchered your name, but. <laughs> it, so uh, it sounds cor correct to me. I think Idawu. Yeah, yeah, I don't know a lot of people named Idawu, so I apologize if I screwed that up. But <laughs> they say that um, if they achieve a, a special effect or they've landed on something awesome, they take notes. Awesome. There's a, there's, That's so, good. you know, if, yeah. if, if yeah. they're using a certain mix or whatever, they just write it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, that's awesome. Great example. Great example. Yeah, it, don't don't underestimate your your ability to find answers. I think that in the current art industry, and I'm not I'm not taking a jab at anyone personally, but I think that the industry, uh, the teaching industry, is at a deficit of very practical knowledge. And and I hope that that that. I think it's going to change it as as we progress into the future. But it it will teach us that our artwork, uh, the the quality of our artwork depends on the approval of an expert, rather than our ability to find the knowledge we need and apply it. You know, in due time, we you have amazing power of reason and muscle memory. Everybody's got that. You can learn these awesome things. So don't underestimate your ability to do experiments, take notes and do better when you wake up the next day. So I'm going to call you out, Joe here. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, okay. Okay. Do it. I love being embarrassed. Well, you know, Morvian, Morvian out there uh, went to your website looking for a painting to buy. Okay. And didn't, fi and didn't find any. No, nah, I don't sell them. <laughs> My man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's like. Okay. So what I'm what I'm gonna say is, if there's anybody out there that wants to buy one of Joe's paintings, yeah. please email info at muraljoe.com and oh, tell him yeah, to I, sell his work. That's I'm it, sorry. Period. I'm, hey, listen, I I don't do that on purpose. I I don't mean it, my all my energy goes toward. Yeah, let me move the mic. So, you know, I've got the mic pointed over at the canvas. All my energy goes toward developing the instructional content. And then I end up with all these partially finished pieces. I'm like, oh, I can't put that anywhere. I got to finish it. I'll finish it one of these days. So my studio is full. Everything behind me is 90% finished. <laughs> There's all of these unmixed things around the edge, right? You know, it looks it looks pretty all right on camera, but then... You know, I, I don't get around to selling it. So if someone says I'm interested in that painting, well, I get on it and I and I finish it because somebody wants to buy. I just need the motivation because otherwise all my energy is in figuring out the mysteries of art and trying to find cool answers that I can make more content. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a bad experience for you. So uh, we had a request here for some awesome reflection stuff. OK, um, OK. And they have emailed a picture to you. All right, all right. Let's go over that, and uh, uh, check it out. We're going to check out. They were over at the Salt Flats. Oh, and nice. Oh, man, I've never seen yeah. that in person. I'd love yeah, to see Yeah, I saw some reflecty stuff going on out there. Okay. And I okay, thought it would cool. be awesome if you did some Salt Flats reflecty stuff. Whoa, look at that. Awesome like picture. So. This is a reference picture. Yeah, they've yeah, yeah. Not a painting. So Not you, can get, you can get fooled. You can get fooled. Sometimes people do yeah. stuff so real. Oh, that yeah. is cool. So that would be awesome. And here's here's an actual painting uh, that we've got from Lily. And Let's check it out. She has been painting an elephant. Okay, okay. Let's see the elephant. Man, those clouds. I could look at clouds all day. You know, that yeah. one's not as complicated. This lightning picture is not as complicated because it's gray on gray. Okay, yeah, look at this. Direct, look so at this one cool. from Lily, she's saying, what would you have done to create the illusion of atmosphere? They struggle with skies. Okay, uh, okay. Well, you, but let me, let me give you a compliment here. You created atmosphere right here, right along this line. That distant horizon is far from the kinds of browns and greens you would see if it was up in the foreground you you clearly successfully added atmosphere to this so create atmosphere all right you can add a just 
a slight yeah, zoom degree. out zo pull, zoom out how you did because the stream it's cutting the oh yeah off. yeah 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 right okay there you go uh, right. i was just taking a look you know what i was doing was taking a look at the leg right there okay so so this is very good awesome job on the foreshortening man is that a cool picture i love it that that fantastic sense of depth by adding a boosting up the atmosphere. You know, you see it in movies all the time. Ben, Ben uh, tipped me off to it. He says, you know, they just use foggers and all kinds of scenes. I can't well, not it see it. Every now. Time. It works <laughs> now, every time. It's all I, I see it. now. All I see is fog. I'm like, everything's this. cooler looking. Yeah. In the fog. But the, you're looking at a room and you're like, why does that room have so much fog? Once you know it, you're looking, <laughs> there's no fog there. So anyway, <laughs> nobody's smoking. There's no dust. Why it's a rainy day. Why is conversation happening in the middle of a cloud in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, because the lighting looks awesome. And you can do it in paintings. It looks awesome. Okay, short answer, light blue, blue, gray, violet. Put it in the shadows on these more distant parts. You, you, uh, If you can see my little mouse hand floating around on this. I see picture, it. You know. So uh, not up in here. I was just testing the the visibility, but where these shadows are, shadows are the big difference makers. That's where atmosphere really makes a difference. So if you add just a little bit of a blue, gray, violet to these shadows, that will take that further part of the object back into the atmosphere. Everything else is done so well, so well, you know. And another thing you can do to uh, create that sense of depth to enhance, you already have great depth because of the foreshortening, but you can add little bits of that same gray violet, not a lot, just a little around the edges. I talk about it all the time, but it's such a good trick to just make the any edge that's more parallel to your vision. So not in the middle of the ear. Lily says that's exactly what she was looking for. That's the answer she was looking for. All right. Sweet, sweet. Oh, I would love to see it, but it can be overdone. You know, it's a subtle effect that goes a long way. And I even see a little bit of it here. See this? I, I just caught some of it. You've got that effect in here. So you can do that in more place. See that little bit of highlight on the left side of the trunk, that little bit of gray. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about right here. See that color? That is not gold. It's not brown. That color right there is much more gray than the rest that little bit and then good job on this too under see the tusks that little bit of light around the edge causes that edge to wrap around and move away you know it makes it more 3d so you use that effect on here you can use it on any of these shadows just little little bits okay does, I've does said that purple much. does that purple only work when you have like a blue background michael is uh, it, well it works best with that you know you might you might see you might see uh pictures where that kind of light is coming in from off off of the scene you know maybe maybe it's somewhere off off camera for lack, lack of a better description uh, i i think it's best to take whatever atmosphere is visible in the picture the the answer is it will still work on other colors because that color specifically is so powerful for making things go further away but i think it's better if you really just identify the atmosphere color itself and do just like we made reflection on water. You're just creating a tiny amount of reflection on every surface as it changes its angle to being more parallel with your vision. That's, so that's would, really would you principle. say that reflected light turns toward violet only in a blue atmosphere or in all lighting situations? Jacob is asking. It okay, wait, ask me that one more time. Does, little... ref, does reflected light turn toward violet? only in a blue atmosphere or in all lighting situations? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thing. I would say that when you mix two colors and your intent is to make them behave like light where it's reflecting, I would say that in comparison to paint, they, they do seem to consistently move toward violet. But just, just to be on the shore side, I'm going to say only because there's blue in the mix. I'm not sure if that would be the case if you were mixing, for instance, a red and a green. Because red and green make yellow light. I don't think that's moving toward violet. But there does seem to be a pattern. You know, light seems to do the opposite of paint. You know, you want to make natural light and make your paint look like it's, you know, you want to make it look like a, a cool scene with light bouncing. So, so you do find 
that where paint wants to go to green very often, you know, you mix a light color with a dark color, it's very frequently turning to, to some, some green amount. Well, when you mix light, it seems to do the opposite. And uh, to the same extent that the paint wants to shift to the green, the light wants to shift toward the violet. That's a mystery that I am still on a mission to solve. You know why that happens. I got theories, but they're just theories. Anyway, it's a cool thing to understand. So I think uh, to summarize this, the, uh, the knowledge of the light color wheel and the paint color wheel is very helpful for doing things like this. Reflection on the bottom of this tusk. Awesome. Look at that. Makes it so 3D. And so you can confidently put reflection on all kinds of surfaces when you know what colors result when light mixes. So just understand that color wheel, then un understand the paint color wheel, and then watch all of my videos to see how you can turn that paint into that light color wheel. All right. So how, how would you go about creating heat waves? Brent is asking, would you be like, you know, like you see a mirage or like you're looking yeah. through heat. You know what I mean? Like it bends the you know, image. Yeah, that is a fantastic challenge. You yeah. know, okay. That is a because it's in motion, right? You you perceive it yeah. because it's in motion yeah. moving. But if yeah, you're gonna yeah, do a yeah. static image, it would be very difficult. That sounds like so I thought I mean so I'm trying know. to think how I would do that. Okay, so to understand the pattern that's it. sorry, Ben, I interrupted you. Yeah. And one of those very important thoughts. So I've got to interrupt interrupt. Get it out. Get it out. Yeah, it sounds such a rude person. Aaron, yeah, if you guys have ideas, <laughs> chime in. But as Joe sorts this out, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Okay, this is just a theory. This is just off the cuff theory. I, I like the challenge. You watch me make a fool of myself right here. Yeah, okay, Joe likes so the challenge. You guys, secret, <laughs> little secret. I'll tell you about Joe being his brother. If you dare him to do anything, yeah, he'll probably try. Right, that's it. That's it. Okay. This is, this is what I've observed about the heat waves. As I've been sitting in my jacuzzi, you know, I have, I have watched on a very cold day, nothing very hot creating those same heat waves that I see on a sweltering day as I'm walking down railroad tracks. So it seems to be like wherever there's a difference in air temperature, you know, you've got one temperature and it's coming up the warmer air is coming up mixing with the cooler temperature. And my theory is there's a change in density. Therefore, there's a change in the direction that the light shines when it goes through that. It's like changing from air to water, change, you know, different medium. We know that light changes directions when it goes through medium. So, so really what I want to do is just distort the image and put like a pulsing pattern of it kind of like on reflection where it zigzags back and forth. I'm thinking of something similar. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put, I'm going to put a person walking. I'm going to put a person back there and I'm going to try to make it look like it is distorted with, with heat waves. And the way I'm going to do that, I don't know. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. Let's put some, let's put a head. Okay. A head. We're going to put a dot right there. And we're just gonna make a silhouette because I'm keeping this simple. And then I, I gotta put some other colors. We can't just have a black silhouette. This that's not gonna look distant. Okay. So now we got some color. Let's add a little bit of white to to you know make it not as intense. Okay, and then I'm gonna put shoulders. We're gonna go like this, you know. Oh, now we got kind of crooked shoulders. Oh so well, like this. Okay, and then we're gonna make arms coming down. You know, let's make it kind of an abstract an abstract uh, silhouette because my hands are not real steady. Okay, but what I'm gonna do is, <laughs> it's an alien, okay? <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mix this color right here so that it's I can try to alien. distort it. <laughs> yeah, it's an alien picture. Okay, yellow, I'm just mixing down here on my easel. What did I do? I did a uh, red, yellow, and white. To, and oh yeah, and then I added some black to it. So I, actually, I'm just gonna go up here and mix this. It's easier to do it right on the canvas. Yellow, uh, red, little bit of black. Did I put white in this? I don't think I did. I might have though. Yeah, I did because the sky had white. Okay, needs white. 
Okay, let's do white. A little more, look, it needs more, uh, what do you think it needs? We need more yellow and black and white. The red is heavy. Okay, so watch, go like this. Be brave, put the paint on. And then you go yellow and some more black right there. And let's see what this does. Let's see if we're closer to the color. Yeah, we're getting closer. Let's get that red. Okay, okay, we're getting closer. We got our mountain color here. Like this, let's put a little bit more yellow. We're getting closer each time. Like this, I just want it close enough that I can re recreate my distant hill here. And then I can come right in on this edge. I'll go like this. We're gonna go in, out, in, out, like this. Like that, I'm getting quiet because I'm concentrating. Okay, then I'm gonna go <laughs> like this. Yeah, we're all, we're kind of concentrating on what you're concentrating on asking ourselves, is he really about to pull this off or are we just going to watch some scribbly paint stuff? Yeah, well, I've got a theory. You know? So if you want to if you want to create the image of heat waves, you you need to have the visibility of the shape that's be you can't distort it so much that you no longer have the presence of the original shape because then all you've got is some abstract shape you got to make it look close enough well that's the interesting thing i was thinking of right so you only perceive that it's distorted if you have an understanding of what it naturally looks like yeah so there you go in a in a painting or, or you know this seems a little tricky to achieve because you're kind of creating a fantastical environment in the first place that doesn't necessarily have any rules that it needs to look like. So how do yeah. you know if it's being manipulated? And it's still, you know, in a video, it goes back and forth and back and forth. You get you get multiple images. You get to see it get distorted. You see it in action. But in a still image, you're trying to show, you're trying to show the just enough presence of distortion to and so that is my theory on how to create that effect of distortion trying to hit my target here so on this I just want to have a good enough character but then have it have it just distorted and I think that yeah I think that's it but look it looks eh, kind of all right it kind of just looks like a squiggly person you know yeah <laughs> right well because if you don't have if, what I'm saying is this is a we might have set you up to lose here because right, how do you right. know if a thing is squiggly if you don't know? I know. Right, right. How can you unsquiggle? Yeah, how can you do that? I mean, but, even in reality, if you're looking through a mirage and, and you're peering off at the distance or through the heat waves, even in that moment, you're asking yourself, "Is am I really? Is that is that really shaped that way? Is this really being manipulated? Even yeah. in the moment, you're in disbelief. Yeah. Well. How difficult it is to see a... a created work and to believe it yeah well okay so i think there is a way though you know i think there's a consistency to the distortion where you where you'll you know i think the amount of the amount of processing your mind does behind the scenes to make sure that you don't make mistakes on a constant basis through your everyday life you know it's i think it's really phenomenal so the image processing power of your brain you know, if you really dig into how do you know anything is what it is in a fraction of a second, the the amount of recognition to make a program that does that is very extensive. So, so there's a pattern to the shape, and you can recognize when that shape has shifted this way, then shifted this, and you see multiple pieces of it consistently shifting that distortion. So, so I think the more you can create the look of a a shape that looks like you know you can make more than one it's not just random squiggles you know i'm trying to make you know the whole thing maybe shifts to the right here then it shifts to the left here you know as it goes down okay then we'll make it go like this boy that is really distorted and not attractive okay you go like this so I don't just make skinny parts and fat parts to the arm. I'm trying, I mean, my hand's just not steady. But what I'm really trying to do is offset offset the shapes so that it goes left, shifts left, shifts right, shifts left, shifts right. Okay, well, that's my best guess. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm 
<laughs> gonna say is my theory. I think I would have to really slave over this to to make it better. Here, let's try to. Make yeah, well, you know, Mary, Mary wants to help you out here. She sent you a reference photo that you could look at if you wanted, and uh, it's of some oh, Miraji can... stuff out in the desert. Is it good? All right, let's uh, check it out. I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's Miraji stuff in the let's desert. Let's see it. Huh? So this is from Mary C. She's oh uh, nice, cool. That looks like reflection on water to me. It yeah. looks like reflection. So so um, all right. Don't hate me for this, but I'm going to disagree for a minute. That that is the same thing. So when we're looking at, uh, I know science books might say otherwise. That's just my humble opinion. But yeah, when let's, you're, let's when you're switch that. picture like that, you know, I'm going to go like this. I'm I'm going to paint while I'm talking. So. Uh, I think that that is something that happens uh, just because sand is reflective. And when you look at that really distant sand, it is, you're, you're looking, you're, it eliminates all of the downward angles. All you're seeing are the horizontal surfaces so close together, you start to see a seamless reflection, but everything is reflective. That's what, that's what causes me to think that way. So no turbo has got a pretty priceless comment here. They say, Joe is learning how painting is like for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. I'm acing this. This, this <laughs> looks exactly like That's a person. A no, that, I, that looks like an ace for sure. <laughs> it's, it's heat waves. All right. You know, we tried, so, we tried. <laughs> yeah, no, you beat him. You guys beat him. <laughs> you beat me, you beat me. I have yeah. to try in the future to do something with heat waves. But my yep. theory, uh, my theory still deserves to be tested, I think. I, I love that challenge because what if I could take my, uh, what if I could like take my painting that has fire in it and create some heat wave distortion in it? That's a really good idea. So I've got to try to achieve that that waviness to an image, man, it sounds hard. Good job for stumping me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, those reflections in the water were pretty cool. The lightning reflections in the water that they were asking about. I don't know uh, what your appetite for reflections in that water might be, Joe. Well, I think that, okay, what kind of reflections do we want to put in that water? Here, let's, let's, let's take a look at the painting. What do you think we should put in there? You mean this, uh, one, this water right here? Yeah, if you wanted to throw some water reflections in yeah, there. Yeah, right. uh, tell me what you put in there. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's put. Uh, let's get rid of my attempt here. Let's get rid of my attempt to do this heat wave thing. <laughs> I tried heat wave. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, that was never gonna work. You guys, that's a ridiculously difficult thing to paint. Who paints hey, 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 hey. mirages? <laughs> I like it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, work on this and come back. You know what he's gonna with, do? Here's what he's gonna do. Yeah, he's gonna obsessively research this oh all. God. I hate week. it. They got me. And I hate then it. next week you're gonna get an email that says, "Hey, welcome to the next live stream on painting." We're gonna to paint heat wave. <laughs> How to paint heat waves on a still painting? By Joe Make it Lockett. look like it's moving. Okay, let's go like this. Well. I still think, you know, you know how like uh, Brian has shown me cool photos of the sun making crazy shapes as it goes up above and behind clouds or the horizon. So I, I think sometimes, sometimes, not always, sometimes it's a similar thing, you know. So I think whatever kind of images, let's, let, I bet if we went more abstract on this and just did like little, little squiggly squiggles like this we'd yeah, have a, squiggly squiggly well because then you know i'm not slaving over what's it's like is that a person is it what is it but i think if i see here you can tell when you look at this that it has there's a recognizable pattern to the distortion you know you can see it and so that's that's what i'm getting at with with the uh my failed attempt at putting a person is that it lacked the it lacked the consistency. Let me put this microphone point for me. Sorry. It lacked the consistency of texture. And I think that that's the missing ingredient to really make it feel like it has that distortion. So, you know, like if we did this and then the whole painting had some, some amount of this distortion, you know, then I think I would be more on my way to achieving that effect. 
All right, I'm going to put some black. We're going to repair this and put some reflections in the water. Nice. Black here. Let's put this. Let's put some of that brown in there. Here we go. And we need lots of that yellow. See, I'm not spreading it out real thin. I'm just getting lots of paint on there first. And then I go to the then I go to the moving it around part. It's like playing in the dirt. You got so much paint on there, it can't dry quick. You know, Aeon says uh, the only thing it's missing is the Loch Ness Monster. Oh, okay. Oh, we need a Loch Ness Monster in there. All right. That's creative. Man, I love monsters. I do love painting monsters. I was working on Leviathan. I didn't uh, give that one very much video time as I was working on it. It, it made a few appearances, and I, I was not happy with it so many times in a row. I moved on to other things that would make me feel more good about myself. <laughs> yes, I do that. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just putting little bits of shadows maybe coming through there. And so now what kind of reflection can we put on here? Let's go. What if we had like a big, uh, maybe we had like a big rock or bush or something in here. What do you think? Or a boat? Shall we do a boat? What if we did that? That's kind of fun. That's something I never do. Let's do a boat. Okay. I think we need a red boat. Maybe like right here. It's going down this channel, you know. It is somewhere in Florida. And uh, this is just sitting here on the water. That's the edge of the boat right there. And then we're going to put the inside of the boat. You know, build the shape first. I just build shape like I'm drawing a picture. I do it with with a, with a certain confidence, you know, because I'm like, well, I know it's this shape. I know the perspective would do this. Okay, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to move this so that we can not have it in the way. All right, so I'll go like this. We're going to put the nose of this. Maybe it's a canoe. Like this, like that. Let's take some more red, create the create the tops. Let's put a little spot where you can throw your lunch. Like this. Oh, yeah, you don't want to get out on that boat with nothing to eat. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. So just put it right it's there. One thing it... about sunsets, they make me hungry. Yeah, <laughs> it's that time. You don't want to go out on that boat with nothing to eat. Okay, then we're going to get some bright highlight. I'm going to brighten up this red with a little bit of yellow so we'll take this take this color and here maybe some white as well just a little bit if i put too much white i lose my intensity of color so just enough and we're gonna we're gonna create a little little bit of highlight across the top of that it's messy but it'll do the trick like that okay then let's go in here you can use the edge of your brush too just lay it down to get a straight line, like so. There we go. Get the nose of that going. And then we'll put another, another seat on the boat here. We need to put a little more light on this one. Let's put another one right across here, like this. And then maybe the boat's got like some uh, an upward-facing bottom. You know, we could put a dark red in there. We could do some... We could do some red, but we got to make sure we mix it with enough black that it looks like it's in the shadow. You know, this is very, very sunsetty. So we're just going to do a little bit of brighter color as this goes down so that it looks like the boat has an upward facing floor, you know, like this. Just put a little bit of this in here. Maybe some orange, maybe not the red, because maybe it's not painted red inside. Maybe it's more of that wood, wood kind of color. We just need a dark color in there to look like the floor of the boat. Like that. Okay. Now we'll put some dark. We need this. We need some dark color. These spots kind of straighten them out a little. There you go. There's my there's my crooked boat. Okay. Maybe a little more highlight. Wait, wait. I'm almost done. Almost done. Let's get a little more yellow in here. And just go a little bit of highlight in there. Okay, now let's get some reflection. All right, so this is a good example, is a good opportunity to show 
what we might expect to see. Now, we really need to darken this red down here because we would not see that brilliant bright red in this backlit sunset scene. You know, you'd see a very muted red. So I'm going to darken that and go like this. Make some wood sides like this. There, darken this as it goes this way. Okay, so when that color hits the water, we really just need to think about what would result. Now, it's pretty easy. When red hits blue, you're just going to get a purple, but red and blue are going to make a less desirable purple, not, not one that I love the look of. It's going to be very gray if I mix those colors here. We'll try it first. Let's try that color mixed with my water. So let's get blue. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be just purple enough. Okay, let's get a little bit of white. We want a color that is in between that red and the blue of the water to get a reflection. And we're going to put a little bit of swoopy waves like that. Okay, let's get some more red. Actually, getting darker is a good thing probably because this is a very dark. I can just add less black. That color has black and I can just add less because when you mix colors with paint, here, let's go. So we got to think about this in 3D. Think of the boat as an upside down boat stuck to this one. Don't think about it as this image flipped upside down. So we want to create a reflection that really goes kind of way out here like this. Creates the nose of the boat. And then we're seeing like you are looking up at it, except it's upside down. So we're showing the underside of the boat right here in the reflection just like that. So I think we could probably go, what do you think? Maybe just a little more of the blue in there. Let's go. It ended up being just right. I had, I didn't have to do any alterations to the color. Red and blue is a pretty safe bet. Makes purple. Okay, so we go here. While Joe is finishing up this reflection here, everybody, we've been at it for about an hour, so we're yep, not going to yep, go much time. longer. So send your work into info at muraljoe.com if you want him to have a look at it here at the end. Also, check out muraljoe.com. Um, he's got a bunch of lessons and stuff on there. All right. Thanks a lot for mentioning that, Ben. Nice. Okay. All right, so here's our reflection, hopefully believable. Now, when I do these little distorted squiggles, be careful not to get fooled by the direction. You know, you want to you want to go according the, to the direction of the water. So I want to make these. These are just little wave ripples. You know, that's why I put those in there to make it look like it's kind of rippled. Here we could even go down and do one like maybe an extra one right here, maybe a little one right here. You know, just a little bit of bonus in there, like maybe the water's rolling a little bit, and it does that. Okay, and so then we could put like a, uh, hmm, what else could we put in there? What do you think, Ben? Are we done? Are we done? You know, uh, that looks pretty hmm. serene. <laughs> Is it all right? <laughs> looks like, like a place I'd like to sit, huh? I'd like to be floating along that creek right about now. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Actually, that'd be uh, nice. Mary sent you another picture of some some heat wave stuff, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's not, check it out. Let's not to it. beat a dead horse, but uh, yeah. Well, this is the future. Uh, this is one of the future videos. It's a provocative subject, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I like it. This is going to end up being one of the future videos on on uh, the channel. So let's not let's not discount it. All right, this is my last touch on this painting. It's a boat without a person. All right. That's how you handle reflection. You just mix those colors together, correct it if needed. If you get the green, green is usually a color that needs correcting. If you're correcting some unnatural effect in your reflection, it is, it's green. And this one didn't turn green, so I didn't have to worry about it. You know, so I've got my, I've got my reflection, and all I did was make it a little bit less red as it came down to maintain my, my gradient look. You know, tried to get a little bit more of the of the underwater color. Yeah, it's not perfect. You know, it could definitely be be tweaked and improved, but you know, the idea is there. Okay. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Let's oh cool picture. Nice. I just now uh, just now scooted over to my computer to see this. 
Wow, look at that. Okay, thank you. Did you say Mary sent this over? Yeah, Mary C sent that over. Man, it's like we I got, got a whole bunch paintings. of helpers here. We got here. some more okay. paintings to look at. Too. Okay, I got to say what immediately stands out to me is that I didn't really have it right on the – so, you know, photo references, I, I have to be careful that I'm not too proud of myself to use photo references. You can't just know stuff without observing. You know? <laughs> and so the first thing that I notice is that these are not just horizontal uh, distortion patterns. The distortion pattern – I see a forest line back there. You know, I see in this in this picture we have the tops of the trees. I'm, I'm going to guess that this is the tops of trees, and it almost looks like it's underwater. Look at that. That's amazing. It looks like light shining through water. So the pattern is very similar. We see like a wave pattern in this, and and the light shining through a wave pattern again, similar to underwater. So it's not just horizontal now how i would transfer that onto the image of a person oh man i don't know maybe if you did a same, similar thing like in water where you make the image jump a little bit like you cut off little bits and pieces and make it shifting and, and jumping over like part of his shoulder is relocated and not even touching the rest maybe because that's how this is this is actually broken apart pieces okay that's yeah, enough so here's another here's another sample <laughs> real quick of somebody these people really want you to understand heat waves man yeah they they feel sorry for me because it's always <laughs> you know it's not every day that joe uh meets joe his is stumped. yeah you guys you guys did all match. right yeah so we got another one here uh this person uh yeah. this is gary gary's trying to do some chrome whoa nice job okay all it lacks is color diversity that's all that it lacks good job it's super cool but Chrome is like a mirror. It reflects the colors of the environment. So just decide what the environment is. Every area that's dark, imagine that as your horizon happening over and over and over again in different parts as these different parts are at the right angle to show the horizon over and over again. So what, what you're seeing in metal or in a, or a bent up mirror really is a good way to think of it is many instances of the same reflection the same environment and so think about it you you might have little bits of slight grayish green it's all kind of grayish to add that metally tone to it but you might have some greens if there's trees maybe it's in a concrete environment maybe there's just buildings so so don't be afraid to make hard edges you know they don't have to be high contrast but maybe you're making actual building lines a building horizon just think about it. You're really just painting your environment. Think about it that way. You'll find yourself putting the color of the ground on areas like this, the shadow on the underside of this or here where the nose is. You could put some brown colors if that's ground or gray, some, some different shade of gray. Just think about it as a landscape. That's what it is. That's all this is lacking. That means that there's also going to be a lot of blue in your highlights if it's in an outdoor scene. You might see a lot of blues in your highlights. And that is a good shortcut to getting things to look a lot more like chrome is just adding blues to the highlights, you know. So that one is Aaron Dugan. I misspoke. Aaron Dugan. Thanks for sending in that chrome. And then uh, here's one uh, that was sent to, for you to have a look at, Joe. Nice. That looks like a fun space. I like it. I like it. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to make this more realistic because – it has a fun, whimsical feel. And I don't feel like the purpose of this is to be overly realistic. But I I do love the structural perspective that's in there. I like how you are careful to highlight. You know, you've got the shadows, the light, the shadow light, good attention to the different directions that you have in here. And so, you know, you can play with perspective and, and make it silly and fun. But if you, if you, ever want to make perspective if someone's looking at this and saying uh if i wanted to make it more lifelike if i wanted to make perspective look more natural then how would i do that well i uh, just the short answer is just imagine everything on the ground getting squished 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 flatter as it goes to a horizon that's that's the first thing so you know a road like this you might see big open swoops you might see them really the road itself might get really flat wherever it goes back and forth 
if you wanted to do that, but this doesn't feel like it's meant to be that kind of a picture. I like it. I like the creativity. Thanks for so showing. Here's a, here's a, here is a Gary slash No Turbo's attempt to do a whoa cool wave. I like it. It's so breaking wave. Looks here. so glassy and smooth and perfect. You know, I like that. A fine specimen of a wave. But they're yeah. So they're wondering about the foam, the wave foam. Trying to figure that out. They're, they're oh yeah, so just use purple. Their wave foam. Yeah, just use purple. That's all you got to do. Okay, so that that was an overly short answer. But in these shadows, you don't want to see this. This looks like an almost brownish gray in comparison to the rest. So just get some get some blue and a little bit of purple in those shadows. So it's it can't be as intense as this blue, you know. But but you want to have that like the gray blue violet thing for the whitewaters. Treat it like a cloud, and then you can also make it coming gradually out of the wave too. You can make it instead of just just to overlap uh cut off you might make some of it starting to appear at like 50 percent mixed with that turquoise so it looks like it's coming out of you know like it's coming out of that turquoise water you might add some of that you know maybe maybe you wouldn't see that in every single example of a wave but it could be a cool of cool effect i love how you can see the i love how you can see the dark stripe right here Awesome. This is a good example for anyone looking. If you don't already know this, you can often see this is the deep ocean. Here, look, this is a window into the deep right here. This is the air bubble that that curl creates, and you're seeing that through the wave. And then this dark is where you're seeing over the top of that air bubble into the deep water, and then it gets light again at the very top where it catches reflection as it's curling. Really good wave anatomy here. So, yeah, just to make it tumble, try using the more gray blue violet shadows on that white water it'll immediately look more like white water if you do that same with this shadow here you know you could make the shadow less black just a little bit less black you you know move to the colored shadow like a blue blue gray violet shadow to to get that to look much more watery and not not quite as striking with the contrast awesome wave though love it that is one cool picture all right, that, that wraps it up for uh, our painting review today, guys. Appreciate you sending in all that work for us to look at. Yeah, man, that is cool. Uh, yeah, thanks. I enjoy looking at your artwork. Love it when you send it in. So uh, we're going we're gonna to call it for today. Thank you for uh, giving me a challenge that I could not do. Painting heat waves is hard. We'll have to remember yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what's, uh, what's rewarding for me is to – is to find the pattern that is teachable. Like say, well, this is how the pattern works. Now I'm now I'm doing it because I learned that this is the pattern to it. Here's how you can get that effect. So you know, with more studying, perhaps I'll I'll do that one. But thanks for stumping me. Well done. We'll see if we can do it again next week. We'll see. Just uh, stay in touch. You can you can get on the email list and be notified ahead of time if you're not already on there. So miraljoe.com. You'll see uh, over on the side. You'll see a sign up for the email list. You can visit my website, look at the uh, things that are available. If you choose to subscribe, you can be a paid subscriber, see a lot of content on there that's not on YouTube. Anything else to say, Ben, before we wrap it up? Anything else we need that I'm forgetting? Um, yeah. Um, you guys don't forget to brush your teeth before yeah. you go to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Very nice. You will <laughs> regret you. not taking better care of your teeth. I promise yeah. you this. I'm Someone like older and wiser than me <laughs> told me that. Anyways. Yeah. All right. With that, we're out of here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.